All right, I'm gonna get started on building my next structure, which is fine scale miniatures branch line bucket coaling station. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and document this build just because it's a 100% stick building. Uh, every other building that I've made so far has had, you know, either laser cut or prefabricated walls that you painted and then put together. This is 100% just sticks. Uh, and that being said, I'm gonna stain everything. Uh, I purchased some stuff called, a, I think it was silver, silver stain or something like that. I can't remember the name of the, of the company that I purchased it from. Uh, James Powell made use of it in his, his structures. I really like the way it looks. Unfortunately, I have no idea when that will ever arrive. I don't believe it's even shipped. I had hoped to get it before uh, I built this structure, but it's just not gonna work out that way. So I'm gonna use uh, standard uh, India ink and alcohol. And so I'm gonna get started kind of laying everything out and just kind of walking you through my process of how I'm gonna do this. All right, taking a look at the, the contents of what comes in the structure kit, uh, you can see you get a, a huge newspaper of instructions. And, and in fact, it's actually uh, two huge newspapers of instructions. Uh, fine scale miniatures, has a tendency, and I, of course I haven't built but one other kit, but it was exact same where there is kind of a narrative of how to put the building together. I'm not fond of narratives. I like fold slot A into tab B with a picture to describe how it's done. Uh, that being said, I think this is still gonna be pretty easy all in all. They provide these really good uh, drawings that you actually build on top of. And for each drawing, you get uh, already pre-cut wood that goes with the drawing. Uh, for the most part, there's some things that, you know, like this stuff is not pre-cut, you'll have to cut that yourself, but that's not gonna be that big of a deal. Uh, of course, you get some nice castings, uh, not as many castings as the other kit I did, but uh, it's still pretty, pretty cool. Uh, it came with some coal, and the coal is shiny. I, I don't know what to think about shiny coal. Uh, I may or may not use that, I haven't decided yet. And then you've got a lot of other lumber here that is not pre-cut. Uh, you can see some of the rubber bands are so old that they just kind of disintegrated. Originally, I believe all of that would have been bundled uh, by a specific group. You can see here, uh, if it's gonna focus or not, but that's that's got green ends, so, you know what's what in there. Uh, I have done some kits where they didn't bother to tell you anything about the size of the lumber that's, that came with the kit. But next step for me is gonna be staining the wood. Uh, my plan there is to use this old peanut butter jar and mix up some stain, which I've already got stain mixed up, uh, but I don't think it's, it's as dark as I want it to be. So I'm gonna do a little experimentation and I, I assume that not every uh, India ink that you can buy is, is equal to other India ink. So you might consider that if you haven't made any washes yet with India ink and alcohol. 
Uh, I, I wish I'd have done a little more research on which ink to get because I think that ink is probably just not as potent as it should be. Uh, but that's going to be the next step here is uh, getting started on, on washing these things so I can get it started putting together tonight. All right. Uh, so this was my, my first test run of my solution. Uh, it turned out really light. I put it in for about five minutes. Uh, it's completely dry. That's too light for my taste. Uh, I added some more ink to my solution and this is what I came up with on my second run. Again, this was five minutes. I pulled it out and wiped it dry and I think that's gonna work for me. So I'm gonna do all of my wood uh, with that process. All right, you can see I've finished all of the wood for wall number one. And you actually make two of these. Uh, fairly happy with the color. It also comes with this, which I still don't know what that is. And it comes with this neat little chain here that's still in the bag. Uh, and then literally, uh, in between getting that finished and starting on the next bag, the solution of silverwood that I wasn't expecting for who knows how long actually showed up. So now I'm kind of trying to decide exactly uh, what it is I want to do with this stuff. And I, I think I'm going to continue with all of the interior of the building with what I've already done. And then when I go to put on the exterior of the building, all of the, the woods on the outside of the building, I will go with the silver wood. I, I am gonna do a test run with it just to kind of see the difference between uh, the India ink and this stuff. So I'm gonna do that real quick and just kind of see the difference between the two. I've got all of the wood stained for all the walls and the assemblies that, that came pre-cut. Uh, I started out with latex gloves and it just, you can see how well that worked. Uh, at any rate, the only thing I have left now is this box of stuff here. Uh, and it's all longer, including this. This wasn't long enough to fit inside my peanut butter jar. So I'm, I'm gonna have to steal a baking dish from the wife, I think. Uh, I'm not sure how well that's gonna go, but uh, I think for everything else, I'm gonna go ahead and use the, uh, the silver wood just to kind of see how it turns out. All the sheeting material for sure will end up getting a coat of some kind of paint anyway. Uh, you know, they, their model is extremely dilapidated. Uh, and I think mine will be as well. Uh, I'm just not sure what color of paint I'm gonna go with. This, this goes with the light blue building that I have on the layout already. I don't think I wanna go with that color. I'm Right now I'm leaning towards a barn red, which I think is also the color that uh, they painted it in their their demonstration, which if you had, I don't know, the 1984 edition of Model Railroad Craftsman or something, you might be able to see it in color. They did not provide any color pictures at all with the actual kit. So I've got nothing to go by besides black and white. But uh, I like the way my my chillery building turned out red, so I'm, I'm thinking I'll probably go with red again with this building. Getting ready to get started on staining the rest of the wood. Uh, so this is all the stuff that was too long to fit inside uh, my peanut butter jar. <laughs> And I know this stuff, uh, this is planking material, I believe, for the outside of the building. Uh, 
as well as this. I'm not sure this may be pre-sized specifically uh, for this up here. Uh, I'll have to dig into the kit to find out for sure. And then I've got these pieces here that will also need to be stained. Uh, and you can see these came with a rubber band on them. Some of them, or I guess all of them probably did. Uh, some of them are color coded, some of them aren't. There's what's left of the rubber band. So that tells you kind of how old the kid is. Uh, but I've got them marked up here where, where the different color coded so I can stain them and put them right back. Uh, Operation Steal the Pyrex from the wife worked. Uh, I distracted her while she was cooking a grilled cheese sandwich and ran out the front door. She caught me though. Uh, I did a football carry and just kind of pushed through her and, and managed to make it out here. Uh, she hasn't come into the building yet. If she does, she'll probably have a rolling pin and you might not see the end of the video. But anyway, I've got this, uh, and I've also got this, which is just a little bit longer than this. So I'm going to use uh, my ink stain that I made, what's left of it, in here for that. And then all of this stuff I'm going to use in here, and I'm going to go ahead and stain it with the silver wood just to see what the difference is. Uh, I get the impression that this is supposed to have a little more silver sheen to it rather than than the black. Uh, we're getting ready to find out. Uh, you can see here, this is my stain. This was just one quick application of the silver wood. And then this was a quick application of dead wood, which definitely has more of a, a yellow cast to it. But, uh, all right, I'm gonna get started staining before the wife comes in here and does mean things to me. I've got the first wall framework completed. A pretty easy process. Uh, you just lay it on here and you can kind of see where little bits of glue end up peeling up the paperwork. Uh, I had hoped to actually photocopy this so I wouldn't ruin the original, but uh, there were no printers for Christmas to be purchased and get before Christmas. So I had to order one from Amazon and it probably won't be here until after the new year. Uh, but oh well, I will come back probably after I finished the rear wall. Got the framework done. Uh, the left side of the building, I've actually got all of the, the siding material on. Uh, this cutout here is for a small, I don't know, tram, trolley, rail car thing that they can bring the coal in. Uh, it's gonna be different. I think I can actually use in-scale track for that. I think it's gonna work nice. But uh, I've got this and that left to do and I'm gonna get started. So all of this wood was put in the stain for 10 minutes. Uh, it's not near as gray as I would like for it to have been, but uh, it's it's still gonna work. Uh, and as far as the construction goes, on this wall, I started on this end and worked that way, then discovered I was gonna have a huge, strange gap in the wood. Uh, so once I figured that out, I put this piece on and then just made it look like that, kind of just, out of the blue, thought, well, that'll fix that. 
Uh, and then on this wall, I knew I was going to have the same issue. So instead of starting on one end, I worked this way towards the middle and that way towards the middle. Uh, so I could do essentially the exact same thing without it looking like the same thing. And then I did a similar thing here. Uh, and this notch out here, I guess, is to shovel coal. I don't know if you shovel from the outside in or the inside out, but uh, that's by design. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and paint. Uh, I've kind of gone back and forth on whether or not I wanted to paint or not. I've, I, I did a little research, and it, it appears that uh, it was not uncommon for these coal dealerships to be painted red. So I think I am, I'm at least going to do this back wall. I, I've got some photos that I uh, got online. I'm going to try and make this look really old with just a little bit of red paint left over at the top. This wall will never be seen because it's going to be facing towards the absolute back of the layout, I'm pretty sure. So no matter what I do on this wall, uh, I, I feel free to do a lot of experimentation because I don't think it'll ever be seen. But that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to do this wall and I'll come back and kind of tell you what I did. Okay, I've applied three to four more coats of the silverwood uh, and I applied it specifically a little more heavily on the bottom. Uh, the whole thing now, instead of each individual board looking maybe like uh, it came from a different place, uh, it all kind of has the same weathered appearance. I also added a little bit of black pigment. Uh, this is Bragdon Enterprises uh, pigment. I'm not sure what it's called, but I added that along with the silver wood and just kind of let it soak in and then wiped a little bit off. Uh, if this is where they're throwing coal in and out of the building, I figure this is probably going to be pretty nasty and, and coal uh, stained. So there's a uh, step one, I guess, and I'm going to figure out what to do next. All right. The next thing I did is I went in with some really heavy ink and I just touched the bottom of everything here uh, to kind of let some of that ink just kind of soak in. Uh, there's a few places I might have got just a little carried away, but I think it'll be okay. Uh, now I'm going to go in with some uh, AK Winter Streaking Grime. It has just a little tinge of uh, green to it, and I'm going to hit some of the, the ends of these rotten boards uh, that are broken away, just kind of see what that looks like. All right, I don't know if you can see much of what I did, uh, but I just went in and, and all of these broken boards put just a little bit of the uh, the winter streaking grime, and then I did this corner just a little heavier just to kind of see what it looks like. Uh, but I think I'm ready for paint. Uh, and, and truth be known, I think this this would look just fine if I kept it like it is, so I'm a little, a little leery of putting paint on it, but I'm gonna for sure do this backside, and if I, if I like the way it looks, then I'll keep going. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this uh, Warren FX acrylic fluid, which should make the paint chip off easier, which is kind of the effect I'm going for. We'll see how that works. All right. Well, here it is. Uh, I don't know that I got it to chip near as much as I would like to. So, I, and just to be honest, I haven't had a lot of luck. Uh, where is that chipping fluid? And I don't know if it's because it's wood or just exactly what it is. 
uh, probably need to do a little more research and watch a few more videos. I did get it to, to chip in a few places. Uh, but what happens is, is when it chips off, it leaves the wood, you know, white again. And then you have to go back and restain. Uh, and then you end up with a, a wall much darker than maybe what you would have wanted, which for this building, I think is going to be okay because it's a coal dealership. Uh, and I'm, and I'm pleased with this. This, this works. It's fine. Uh, so I think I will go ahead and do the other walls. And I did go ahead and put some, some powders down at the bottom just to kind of make it a little more dingier, a uh, little brown as well. So, all right, I'm going to get started on the other two walls. All right, I've done my two side walls. Uh, this time I went with a heavier chipping fluid and it did chip off a little bit easier, but my issue is, you know, even using the toothpick, when you get the paint to scrape off, you can see uh, how much brighter that is than all of the the stained wood that you spent hours staining and now you've got this yellow new looking wood underneath your red paint. So I'm going to go back over with uh, this wood enamel and I'm going to try and thin it out a little bit as I go so it doesn't make it just completely uh, brown dark. I'm calling the walls finished. Uh, I'm fairly happy. And I tell you, I wish I had some more signs. Uh, I do have some, but what I've got right now is, is water slide. And I'm not going to put water slide on this. Uh, again, if I had a printer... I would print some of these signs out so I'd have the more than one and uh, and then I'd have some big ones for, you know, like maybe right in here somewhere. I haven't decided exactly, but uh, I should get I should get my printer from the big shopping store amazon.com sometime. Uh, next week and I'll put some on then I guess <clears throat> but right now next step is to glue these walls together so I guess I'll do that I've got the three sides glued together kind of take a look at what that looks like I have to come in and paint this I guess I haven't completely decided how I'm going to handle that, but uh, I'm getting closer. Also gotten started on the floor. It's a pretty neat design here. Another 15 or 20 minutes I ought to have that complete. I don't know if I mentioned it, but the template is just like with the walls. You spot glue them down and then just build right on top of it until you feel like you can take it off. And pretty pretty neat way to do it. Uh, if I'm ever planning on scratch building something, having a detailed drawing is definitely a great way to start if you know what it is you're wanting to build. I've got the, the three walls put together, and I've got the floor finished. I've added these uprights. I thought I would come out here where the light is a little bit better. Uh, I do most of my modeling at night, and I have poor lighting. So, this is where I'm at right now. I've got the roof to complete, and there's a shed that goes on the back. Uh, before I begin work on the shed, 
I'm gonna go ahead and, and kind of test fit it on the layout, see how that works. Because I had considered compressing this a little bit for the space on the layout. Then I decided, no, I think it'll fit. So that's what I'm getting ready to figure out if it fits where I hope it fits. Moving forward. All right, so I'm kind of at that point in the build where I need to really start thinking about what I'm going to do inside the building. Because uh, I want to have all of that completed before I ever do anything with the roof because I think it's going to be a lot easier to get to and, and to make happen. Uh, they've got some templates here for uh, an air compressor platform. And then they've got these templates made for this platform, which goes right in here. Uh, this platform, near as I can tell, uh, looking at the pictures, and the pictures are dark, they're in black and white, and you really can't see any detail that's any further past like the first three or four feet of the building. But the air compressor, I believe, is mounted high on the wall here. Uh, so there's an air compressor that goes on top of that, and it's a another white metal casting like this one. Uh, you'll also notice that I've got some in-scale rail back here. Uh, that's for the dollies. Uh, the dollies run back and forth on either side of the building with buckets on them. And I'm, and I'm still not entirely sure how the operation worked as far as, you know, in real life. Uh, but there's some white metal casting dollies that you put buckets on. And here's the rail. Let's see if I can do this. Here's the rail that came with the kit. It's wood. It is very small. It's bent up from being in the box for decades. And I just don't know that I want to use it. And there's not a whole lot of difference in size. The in-scale rail is definitely bigger, but it's not so much bigger that I think it's going to matter. Uh, and then they provide these ties that you actually make use of. And they're, they're the perfect size to fit up underneath that rail working out. I'm still not sure exactly how I'm going to go about doing that. Uh, I may or may not use the wood ones. I, I think it, it might be a little difficult. I suppose I could glue these in where I want them in the building, then come back and take off the plastic and then put these underneath and then fill in with dirt. Uh, I'm going to have to think about that a while. I'm not, I'm not even ready to do it yet, so I don't know why I'm babbling. Uh, but I'm going to build these platforms, and then I'm going to build, go ahead and build this since it's all on the same piece of paper, and I will come back when I've done more. You can see I've got the air compressor up on its platform there in the back of the building. I've also completed the front of the building. And that's not uh, glued on yet. And let me see if I can kind of show you what I got going on here. This is the back wall of the shed. And for some reason, this turned out darker than the rest of the building, which it doesn't really matter because you will never see this side of the building. Uh, this is the side that you'll actually probably see. And it turned out just fine. I'm pleased with that. Uh, now here, I did some experimentation with this, uh, because th this is the back side of it. You won't see this at all, but I went ahead and tried some paint scraping and I think that's gonna work. Uh, so I have that left to do with uh, 
with this. Uh, and I also have all of these castings to paint. Sorry about that. Uh, I've got the ladders made. Uh, don't look too close at this. You'll see I use two different sizes of wood. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, again, it won't matter because one of these, I'll use the, the thicker one, will go back towards the back. You'll, you'll never see it. So I'm not too concerned about that. So what I have left to do, uh, I, I have completed everything as far as structure goes, with the exception of the roofs. So here is what you're supposed to build for the back wall, for the, for the shed. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm going to do this. We'll do something like that. Uh, but I'm going to try and make it a little easier. Uh, I may just go straight with cardstock. Put this up here where it goes and use cardstock and then just roof it because you're not ever going to see that. Uh, so I don't see the point in, in making all that lattice work. Uh, that being said, this is what they expect you to do for the roof. Uh, and they provide this detail for the rafters. And I did make one just to kind of kind of see. And you know, it wasn't terribly difficult, but you got to make 28 of them and you're never going to see them unless I make it to where they're fixing the roof, which is what they did when they modeled it. Uh, they, they made half the roof kind of missing in a few places so you could see down into the building, which is kind of cool. But uh, I plan on putting a light in so you can see inside the building. So I don't think I'm going to mess around with all of those. Again, I think I'm going to go with with a cardstock roof. And if I want, you know, to... To show some wear and tear, I can glue, uh, pardon the camera, I can glue some of these, you know, I can, I can cut a hole in the cardstock, glue these to the bottom of the cardstock, and then, you know, do something that, that's going to show uh, detail if I, if I want to do that, but I, I doubt I will, because I'm ready to get this project over with but that's where i'm at now i just pretty much have the the castings to paint and and the roofs to put on and i don't know i, I might actually finish this up tomorrow uh, it just kind of depends on how it goes i've got the details painted uh, now i don't have anything glued in yet because again the in scale track has to be put in first uh, so I think the actual building has to be put on the track before I can do any of that which means that I can't put the roof on uh, but as far as the details go they're they're pretty much kind of where I'm gonna have them uh, except for this crane which actually runs here and there's a cross member that comes across here and I, I believe I will actually be able to swing that back and forth once I get it put in. Uh, and I, I've got a few more things I could do to this as far as details go. Uh, I just, I know I'm going to end up handling that a lot between now and then. And one of the, the bad things about white metal castings is, is that the paint rubs off so easy. So I'm going to try and just kind of leave that like it is for now. Uh, and just work on the roofs. I'm going to try and make it to where the roofs, uh, maybe I can take them on and take them off. Uh, I haven't completely decided yet. But uh, that's what it's looking like right now. And I will come back and show you more when I've done more. I've got the roof 
and the shed glued on. Uh, fairly happy with it. This might still be just a little shinier in a few places than I'd like, but all in all, I think it's gonna work. Uh, now, I believe what I'm gonna do with the roof for the shed, uh, the actual structure, I think I'm gonna build another one of these minus the wood. Uh, and then make this a structure that can be lifted off and on. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I decided to not make 28 two befores that you're never going to see uh, just to span across the top of the building there. So I think that's what I'm going to do next is, is get this ready to go. Uh, and then I think I'm ready to glue my details in. So, I'll, I don't know, I'll probably glue the details in first and then start working on the actual roof. All right, I've got the crane uh, kind of temporarily positioned in there. I wanted to take it in here on the layout and kind of see how, how much room there was uh, for a set of cattle cars to go through here. Uh, because this is going to be a shared a shared track uh, I think it's going to work because I still I still have to bring the whole building up to track level uh, none of that's glued in yet or at least the the crane is not glued in everything else is glued in so uh, I'm just almost ready to make it permanent I need to add the chain to the to the crane, and I was trying to decide whether or not I wanted to hang a bucket from the chain. Uh, I don't think there's enough room to do that. I don't want to take any chance. I'd like to be able to leave it forward if I wanted to, uh, to get rolling stock back and forth through there. So I don't think I'm gonna put the bucket on. I think I'm just gonna leave the hook uh, free floating in the air. I've got the details glued in. Uh, including the crane. Uh, I haven't yet tried to paint this chain, so I'm going to try and wash that and see if I can't get it to where it's not quite as bright. It is pivotable, so I can move it out of the way for traffic going by. Uh, I got this little bucket in here. If you don't look very close, you can't tell that it's not very good with the handle, but uh, it's there. Uh, I'm working on the shed roof, and what I've done is I went ahead and made two more of these just for some structural strength. And originally, I thought what I would do was make this to where I could take it off and on. But I don't think that's going to work because this structure here uh, protrudes out from the building. It's kind of a wonky way of doing things. So I think this is it's going to have to be permanent. Uh, but it's going to work. I'm just going to have to cut that notch out. And I kind of know how, how many notches it's going to, how many planks it's going to take to make it work. Uh, it's just kind of a trial and error thing. You can see I used a high-end fiber maple and brown sugar box to come up come up with it. Uh, but uh, I'm getting closer. For the most part, I am complete. Uh, I've decided not to go through with with putting the the in scale track in at this point because I'm still not 100% sure what I'm going to do with the overall scene. Uh, I like where the blue building is, DeWitt's. Uh, if I want to keep it there, I'm going to have to rethink a lot of things. Uh, so I'm just, I'm just not sure exactly how it's all going to turn out at this point. I want to for sure build the corrals before I do anything else so I can kind of get the spacing 
and, and a few other things uh, ironed out. And I think that uh, I'm just gonna leave things as it is right now. Uh, uh, look, it's the, uh, it's the 461 coming in to, to pick up an empty. Huh. How, how serendipitous that we just happened to be here when it showed up. Well, at, at any rate, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with, with the project. There's still a few touch-ups here and there that, that I'll do, you know, once I get it positioned. What I'm thinking about doing uh, is actually cutting this whole section out uh, where I can work on it as a, uh, as a diorama. I'm, I'm not sure yet, because uh, I'd kind of like to extend this track uh, here. If I could extend that a, a little way, uh, I, I, think, I think that might be kind of cool. It would be nice if I could have two gondolas parked there instead of just the one. Uh, but again, I'm not sure. I'm just kind of babbling about what I might do. Uh, but there it is, and uh, thanks for watching the channel, and I'll, I'll leave you with some still shots, and have a happy new year. Never gets to spend any time at home.